I'm a vet for 23 years. You know, God doesn't put anything on you that you cannot bear. Your job is to go forward with your life. Don't let stuff like this stop you from proceeding on with your life. And we just had this, all this roof stuff put on about maybe a little over a month ago. And they're into the stretch, and it is Sam Brook, and on the outside, Push Me, Pull You. Push Me, Pull You, and Arad Ortiz Jr. have taken the lead as they come into the final furlong. Sam Brook gives way, and on the far outside, it's Weekend Score making a race of it now. Push Me, Pull You, and Weekend Score on the outside. Weekend Score and Push Me, Pull You. These two will decide it. Weekend Score, Push Me, Pull You. Here's the wire. Very close. Oh, they were bobbing heads right at the finish. Either of these two could have won it. When you step on the ice, uh, you pretty much forget about anything that's going on in your life. Just to be associated with it, it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. I played with Cole a bunch uh, throughout our four years here. You know, every night he puts on his hard hat and he works hard. And Shane, he's the same type of guy. He's fun to play with and he's fun just to watch. The things that he can do with the puck are, you know, things that you don't see every day. So, uh, you know, you always have to be ready when you're out there on the ice with him because he's such a, such a skilled and such a great player and he has great vision. 15, 20 minutes south of us, they were getting pouring rain, but we were getting major snowfall, so it was fantastic. I heard 20 inches of snowfall last night, and once we heard that, we were packed up and we came here. I called out sick today. Shh, don't tell my boss. If you take like a block and you carve it down into something, we're actually doing the exact opposite. We're starting with something small, and we're adding to it to make it larger.
are going to be late. No, I'm not. I'm not. I still have time. If I catch the next bus and I hustle, I will make it. And you feel confident that you're going to hop on that bus because it's the last chance you have. Seems like a lot of pressure if you're asking me. Well, see, that's it. I didn't ask you. Go, 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 go! Go, go, go! What you're watching is a school bus full of passengers held hostage by terrorists. First responders rushing in to help. Officer Michael Peckham of the Scotia Police Department discovers a suicide bomber on the bus. Get him out of there. Drag him out. Go. So I looked up and I saw, I saw leaves and I saw blue sky and I saw this face and he said, didn't I tell you not to look at me? And, and then I saw his hand coming up with a knife and coming down and that's the last thing that I saw. And that knife went, went right into my, my left eye. He had taken the knife to my throat. He had every physical advantage. He, he had taken me by surprise. He was stronger than I am. I had one advantage and one advantage only and that was the law. And I just started yelling, help! Help wasn't far away. Colony police investigator Michelle Crowley just happened to be driving by when she spotted a fellow officer. You didn't think she was going to make it? No. No. Not with the amount of blood. Her face was just covered. What were you telling him? Um, I was just basically saying, uh, you're going to be okay. You know, it's going to be okay. We're going to get you out of here. The ambulance is coming. She was about 12 pounds and she had these little tiny deformed almost T-Rex limbs and she was severely contracted in the back because she had kind of like squiggle like a worm. And so Nimi came to my house and she was one of six dogs and she wanted to be part of the pack. No different than any other puppy. security system in Watertown, Connecticut lies Theraplan, home to an innovative medical marijuana growing facility. Ruby grants us a rare look inside Theraplan's facility where few cameras have gone. Security measures include bulletproof glass, a retinal scanner, and restrictive color-coded ID badges. Within these walls, Ruby is cultivating marijuana in a relentlessly researched and strictly regulated approach. As soon as you walk in, you can smell. Once crystallized, the buds can be harvested, dried, and cured. Oh, it, it's almost, you think about a wine connoisseur, same kind of thing. They, they're able to 
pick out those subtle tones. If you're familiar with medical marijuana, this is what you typically see. But in New York State, you cannot sell the flower bud. So how do you extract the medicine from marijuana into a tiny pill or other form of medication? They use this carbon dioxide extraction machine. It pulls the medicine, either THC or CDB, from the bud. Handling the plant's medicinal essence is delicate work. It is meticulously packaged into tiny pills, decarboxylated syringes, and cartridges ready to be loaded into personal vaporizers. What we do here, it's not rocket science, but it is an expertise, and it has taken years to be able to perfect a technique that ensures a consistent product. The company has invested millions of dollars into this business, and despite already serving 5,000 patients in Connecticut, Theraplant has yet to turn a profit. However, the patient list is growing, and Ruby is hoping to expand his medical marvel to patients in New York. McClellan Street and Eastern Ave is one of at least five. The six-year-old crossed over by himself. Superintendent Larry Spring estimates the boy was gone for about 30 minutes. So we took a time lapse of this intersection to show you just how much traffic passes through here within a half hour span. So the question is, does chronic Lyme exist? And if so, why isn't it being recognized and properly treated? Scientists say it all goes back to how Lyme disease was first classified four decades ago when it was discovered. It's definitely a different kind of law enforcement, one that has deputies in Schoharie County trading in their wheels for skis. There's no such thing as a bad day at work when you get to do this job. Oh, it's nostalgic because uh, it hasn't changed. It's the same place. The oval's still there. You know, the rink is still here. So when you come back, it's uh, it's like going. Like I tell people, it's like we're in Pleasantville. It's a it's a really special spot, and um, we're just proud that we brought something really positive from here. I think people forget that team was the greatest hockey team ever assembled, and um, we beat them.